you know, just spending $5 a day, you can get thousands and thousands of impressions and that will lead to views, subscribers potentially, comments, etc. right? And maybe beat sales. What up? It's your boy, Luke for Prez, back in the mix with another video for you guys. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day as always. Today, I am going to show you exactly how to set up YouTube ads for your beat selling business. If you've watched any of my previous videos on digital ad setup, you'll know that I've had mixed views in terms of using YouTube ads. I personally have not found it to be effective in actually driving sales. However, there are a number of producers out there who have had success utilizing this type of ad to actually sell beats. And so because of that, I think it's important to make this video and to show you how to do it if it's something that you decide you wanna experiment with. Even though I haven't personally found much success using YouTube ads to actually drive sales, they can be a valuable resource if your goal or if one of your goals is to blow up your YouTube channel and get more subscribers, more views, whatever the case may be. Personally, I don't think that that should ever be your number one goal, right? That's like icing on the cake that comes with, you know, the hard work and persistence that you put in to actually creating valuable content, creating the most fire beats possible. You know, if you build it, they will come kind of thing. However, you can definitely expedite the process by utilizing, you know, these kinds of ads. So with all of that being said, let's get into exactly how to set up a YouTube ad for your beat selling business. So as you probably already know, but just in case you don't, YouTube is owned by Google. So all of the YouTube ads are actually set up and created through the Google ads dashboard. So that's what you see on my screen here. Um, all you have to do to get this, uh, to get to this screen is to go to ads.google.com and set up an account. The account is free to set up. However, it will require you to enter some kind of payment information because if you do decide to run ads, they need a way to charge you obviously, right? Let's say you're ready to start investing in your business and you want to make a, an ad for one of your YouTube videos. Uh, what you want to do is go ahead and click on new campaign. This is the screen where you set a goal for your campaign. As you can see, there's some really basic things, get sales, get leads, website traffic. In terms of these specific types of ads, meaning YouTube video ads, uh, the one that you actually want to click on, even though, you know, obviously we all want to get sales. Um, but the one that you want to click on for this purpose is actually build a brand awareness and reach. So you want to click on that one and that's going to give us the most options available uh, for how we want to set up the video ad. So that's why even if you are trying to get sales, uh, I think it's important to click on this one as your goal, then click video in terms of uh, the campaign type that you want to have. And now you get to choose what type of ad you're going to be running. We're all familiar with skippable in-stream ads. There are those kind of annoying ads that pop up in the middle of you watching a video. Bumper ads are basically the same thing, except they're uh, non-skippable and they're limited to like six seconds. Um, so probably not the best for, you know, what we're, for our purposes here, if we're trying to promote one of our beats. Um, and then a non-skippable in-stream ad um, is also limited to uh, 15 seconds. So I think for our purposes, the best one to pick is skippable in-stream ad. That's the kind where after five seconds, you have the option of skipping, but the ad it doesn't have to be limited 
uh, to that time frame. Like you could have, you know, a full beat video there or even like a longer video in some cases. It's just up to the person watching if they want to, you know, continue on with the rest of the video at that point. Um, but in terms of driving these quote unquote vanity metrics, which is really like the main thing that you can accomplish with these types of ads, these skippable in-stream ads uh, are definitely the way to go in my experience. So we'll go ahead and click continue. That will bring you uh, to this page where you get to basically dial in all of the different elements of your ad. Campaign name, you can name this whatever you want. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Bid strategy. So you're actually not able to choose the bid strategy. You are locked into target CPM. Target CPM is cost per thousand impressions. And as it says here, you set the average amount you're willing to pay for every thousand times your ad is shown. So yeah, we're, we're basically kind of pigeonholed into that, but that's fine. Now you get to choose your daily budget. So obviously as with all online ads, as I've stated many times in the past, uh, I think it's important to definitely start small during your experimentation phase and build up slowly from there based on the results that you're seeing. Because it's basically inevitable that at the beginning of this process, you are going to end up wasting some money as you're getting everything optimized. So in terms of these kinds of videos, I would recommend starting very small, like $5 a day at first, because you can actually get like a, a pretty large number of views just for a couple cents. And I'll show you how to dial that in here in a moment. Um, but yeah, start with that. And you know, you can kind of fluctuate it up and down and experiment from there. Next up is the networks. Where is your ad actually going to be shown? So unfortunately with this kind of video, you can't appear in the YouTube search results, but you can include yourself on video partners on the display network, which basically means your video might be shown on other search engines, other websites within Google's display network. I personally always click this off because I'm really just trying to advertise on YouTube. And if I can't determine what websites they're actually showing our ads on, you know, you, you can't really tell if, if your money is being spent appropriately. So I leave it just with YouTube. Uh, locations, this is totally up to you. You know, if you make drill beats, you know, maybe you wanna add like the UK in here or whatever, you can, you know, choose which location you want. Uh, I usually just go United States, enter a language, it's already preset at English. Uh, so inventory type, this is just for like business owners who maybe don't want to have their ads run on certain videos and might have like explicit content or whatever. Uh, for our purposes, I, I think it's sort of irrelevant, but you know, I just leave it as standard. And this is kind of a continuation of that. Like if you only want your ad to be shown on content that's like suitable for families or whatever, you can, you know, toggle through that. I just leave that as is. If you click on additional settings, you can set like a frequency cap. So like if you only want people to see your ad once a day or something like that, you can set that here. Um, you know, that way you're not inundating people over and over with the same ad. Uh, but I mean, honestly, I think that's how the ads become effective is if, you know, you see if, if people end up seeing them multiple times. So I wouldn't set a, a, a cap there. Uh, you would want to leave it on all devices, ad schedule. You can determine like what hours of the day, if you think your target audience is only on YouTube from like a certain time to a certain time. This allows you to uh, you know, play with that. But especially when you're just starting out, I try to leave these things kind of as broad as possible and then you can dial in as you go. So if you're just starting, I would leave that uh, there as well. Ad group is basically like the level under campaign. So you can actually create uh, a number of different ads within a single campaign and group them in these things called ad groups. The way that I do it though, is I usually just run ads for one video at a time. So my campaign has one ad group within that ad group is just one video ad and that's it. And I, and you know, I'll leave that on for a while, see how it does turn that off and then just create a whole new campaign like that. It's just easier for me uh, to do it that way. So, you know, you can name this whatever you want. 
Um, moving on here, you can get, you can actually set up the demographics. So now is where uh, we actually want to start se selecting or deselecting certain things, right? So it, it just basically depends like how broad you want to go. But I would say like m most likely you 65 and over people are not searching for type beats to rap to on YouTube, right? So I'd probably deselect that. I'd probably deselect this all the way down to maybe like 18 to 34, you know, maybe you want to be a little bit more broad, do 35 to 44 in terms of age group. Um, you know, male and female, I would actually leave that. Like you, you would think like it's mainly like a male dominated situation, but I actually get tons of sales from like female artists. Uh, so you'd actually be surprised. So I, I would definitely leave, you know, both of those, um, open and then definitely keep unknown selected as well. Because if you don't like, there might be a ton of people in the 18 to 24 range that, um, you know, Google just hasn't been able to figure out how old they are that you would exclude if you, you know, uncheck that. Um, household income, I really don't know how they calculate that. I would just leave it all there. Parental status, I think is pretty irrelevant to, you know, potential artists, but things to play with if you want. But I, you know, I, this is basically all I would be doing if I were actually setting up a new ad right now audiences so the cool thing with youtube ads is you can really kind of hone in on specific groups in a couple different ways you can set up audiences which is basically just like determined by google who is like actually a rap fan or who might be a, a you know a music artist um then you can actually add keywords which we can get into and you can select specific videos or channels that you want your ads to run on. So we'll go through every single way, like all three of those right now. And I think you should definitely utilize all three at once and then let Google kind of determine you know, which of those is working best and you know where your budget's gonna go. So, you know, obviously like rap and hip hop fans, you wanna put that, you know, maybe music lovers, right? Might be a good idea. I'd probably leave it at that. Maybe like pro musician slash DJ equipment. I don't know. But for these, I'll just leave it there. But you can, again, play around with it. That is highly, highly encouraged. It's necessary. You're going to have to try a million different things before you stumble upon a formula for these ads where it's working the way that you want it to. That's just how it works. So keep that in mind during this whole process. Keywords. So now this is really where you can basically figure out who you're trying to target, right? And it's really gonna depend on what type of beat that you are using for the ad, right? So if it's a pop smoke type beat, right? You're gonna wanna put in pop smoke type beat, pop smoke type beat, free maybe if you're offering free downloads, right? drill type beat maybe right uk drill type beat whatever like you think and you know go crazy with these put as many as you uh as you can think of and don't be afraid to utilize the google keyword planning software uh to you know help you get determinations on keyword popularity uh you can access that by clicking on tools and then kicking uh clicking on keyword planner here i'm not going to do that now um but that'll give you like an idea of how many people are typing this into Google. It's not necessarily the same on YouTube, but it will basically give you a, a general sense of who's typing in what and how frequently. So you can add additional keywords there. Topics, same kind of thing. Um, if you click on uh, arts and entertainment, then you can click on uh, music and audio. And then where is it? urban and hip hop, hip hop and rap. You can do soul and R and B if you want, if you're making those kind of beats. So I just have those selected, just, you know, give Google as many options as possible to uh, determine who to show your ads to placements. So this is the same thing. Like you can advertise on other producers channels. You can advertise on, you know, rappers channels if you want. I mean, I think you should do all of the above and just see what works best for you. But, you know, try to think about what channels are artists actually watching, right? So maybe it's like 
uh, Smart Rapper. That's a dope channel, right? If you're actually like a, um, a like a, a up and coming rapper, right? So maybe I'll put that. I'll advertise on his channel. Uh, Adam Ivy has great content for artists and producers, right? So you know, maybe you want to advertise on his channel. So just like think about who could potentially be your target audience. Who would potentially be interested in hearing your beat, right? Uh, and just, you know, go crazy with it. If there's specific videos, like maybe a, a, you want to advertise on like the most popular pop smoke type beat on YouTube, right? Which is easy to find. Just type that in and, you know, sort by most views or whatever, right? You want to add that one, you can do that. You can actually paste in exact URLs into this and, and choose videos that way. So that's basically how I would approach this placement section. Uh, bidding. Now, this is really important. This is where you get to choose what your CPM will be. And again, CPM is cost per 1000 impressions. What I've found to be able to work, you can put this as little as like, I would say like three cents, right? It might not actually require three cents to get a thousand impressions. It might be one cent or two cents, but this is the ceiling. So you don't spend any more than that. And that's how you can see like, it might not actually require three cents to get a thousand impressions. It might be one cent or two cents, but this is the ceiling. So you don't spend any more than that. And that's how you can see, like it might not actually require three cents to get a thousand impressions. It might be one cent or two cents, but this is the ceiling. So you don't spend any more than that. And that's how you can see, like, you know, just spending $5 a day, you can get thousands and thousands of impressions and that will lead to views, subscribers potentially comments etc right and maybe beat sales you know just spending five dollars a day you can get thousands and thousands of impressions and that will lead to views subscribers potentially comments etc right and maybe beat sales so you don't need to go crazy with a high you know target cpm bid keep it at three cents in my experience i think i've never gone over five cents uh, per thousand views and it's going to depend on which video you want to promote, right? Like if there's a ton of people advertising similar type beats, then, you know, that CPM might need to be higher in order for you to, you know, complete your daily budget. You're just gonna have to see how it goes and check back on the dashboard regularly, and then you can adjust it as needed. All right, and finally, now you can actually create your ad. So all you have to do is paste the URL. So I've already got my latest beat uh, copied there, and I just pasted it. And now you can customize exactly how you want the ad to appear. So again, it's going to be a skippable in-stream ad. The final URL is if someone actually clicks on the ad, where are they gonna go, right? So I think you should just leave it as the actual video that you're promoting, right? Cause that's what we want. We want to get views. And if somebody skips after the five seconds is up, it doesn't count as a view. So if somebody clicks on the ad and they actually go to your video, that's when it counts as a view, right? However, if they watch up to 30 seconds of the ad and then click skip ad, it still counts as a view. So you still might get some views that way as well. But in any case, if you're trying to promote your actual YouTube channel, I think you should have you know, the link correspond to the actual video that you're promoting, but you could try putting your beat store link there. You could try putting just your channel page there. If you want, again, it's going to um, require some experimentation to figure out what works best for you. The display URL is what appears here. Like see where it says youtube.com slash watch, right? If you want to put like your actual website there, even though that's like sort of misleading, if you're actually sending them back to the video, um, you can do that or, you know, just leave it as you know the URL of the video. You can do that too. I don't think it really matters too much because it's just like there in the corner. If you want a call to action, you can click that. You could do like, listen now. Oh, look, that's perfect. You only get 10 characters. <laughs> so 10, 10, boom. Right. And so that appears as the little button, as you can see on the ad headline, you can use the uh, title of your beat, like whatever, like do Right. Or, you know, 
actually it's too long so maybe just like use the t the title of the beat so in this case it's called cash right so boom play around with it companion banner um auto generate a banner so that's like i think it's this uh that shows on the side so i think yeah i mean it just gives people another area where they could potentially click on your ad uh, and get back to your channel so yeah totally i would just leave that there um and then you can name the ad i just typically name it the, the title of the video right but i'll just leave it as ad number one you might get some like potential error messages here on the side like it says your campaign might not serve because your bid is too low try increasing your bid I wouldn't do that at first. It might just be Google trying to get more money out of you and it might work just fine. Like in my experience, I've gotten that error message before and it, you know, it serves just fine. Um, and I, you know, my budget maxes out every day. And then same thing with this one, your campaign will get um, few or no impressions because your targeting is too narrow. Um, not in my experience. And you know, this is exactly how I've set it up, but you know, you can try on clicking some of these if you want and see if that like adjusts it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Don't always take these things as gospel because sometimes it's just like they give you erroneous information. So with all that being said, uh, once you have this stuff to your liking, go ahead and click on create campaign. Make sure all of this stuff is on point and then click continue to campaign and boom, that thing is now enabled and you can track all of your metrics right from the Google ads dashboard. It might take a while. It says status eligible right now, but it might take a while in your case. Um, yeah, as you can see here, if you actually click on the ad, it will show up at first as under review because uh, Google needs to review it and make sure that it meets their standards for advertising, that there's not any sketchy content or that it's a scam or whatever. This usually just takes like, um, you know, several hours to maybe like 24 hours. Uh, in my experience, it's usually pretty quick. And then, uh, you know, it should be good to go as long as, you know, you're just running a normal beat video. I've never had a problem with it. And then it will go from under review to uh, active and you'll be good to go and you'll start seeing the impressions roll in. So that is basically really quick how to set up uh, YouTube ads for your beat selling business. Again, uh, it, this is something in my experience that has not resulted in direct sales, but it is good for you know getting additional traction to your YouTube channel, which if nothing else is good for brand awareness and also just instant credibility. Like people are gonna trust producers more who have better numbers on social media. It's just a, a stupid, unfair reality, but that is the, you know, the nature of, of the world at this time. And you know, if this will help you get additional subscribers and you just have your channel appear, you know, more popping, then, you know, that can serve you well in the long run as you know, shallow and silly as that is. You know, that is a factor. So I definitely wouldn't make this like the main focal point of your marketing strategy. Again, I still think Google search ads are the most effective way of, you know, getting cold traffic to your site to actually buy beats. But, um, you know, if this is something that you want to do kind of in conjunction with that as a supplementary uh, you know, marketing stream, you know, definitely look into it. And hopefully now you know exactly how to get it set up. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm recommend my videos to other producers out there who might need help. Oh, another cool thing. Uh, I actually started writing blog posts for Producer Grind. Shout out Producer Grind. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with them. Got an amazing platform uh, for producers. Uh, I'll leave a link to my latest blog post in the description. I'm writing about all types of stuff to help you level up your beats. And that's been a lot of fun. So uh, definitely check that out. And that is basically all I got for you guys today. Um, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.